the Sioux Indian giant of the Korean War. The Korean War is often referred to as the Forgotten War, often being overshadowed by other conflicts such as World War II and the Vietnam War. In spite of this obscurity, there are many acts of heroism that deserve recognition. One of these came from Woodrow Keeble, the first full-blooded Dakota to earn the Congressional Medal of Honor. Woodrow Wilson Keeble, nicknamed Woody, was born on May 16, 1917, on the Siston Wapton Reservation in Wabay, South Dakota. Early in his childhood, he would move to Wapton, North Dakota. He and his parents were full-blooded members of the Siston Wapton Oyate Nation of the Santee Dakota Tribe. Keeble was enrolled in the Wapton Indian School, now called the Circle of Nations School, a boarding school where he was given a strictly disciplined upbringing. While there, he excelled in athletics, his endeavors aided by his large and robust size. In particular, he stood out playing baseball, especially pitching, and led his amateur team to a 10-0 record, something that drew the attention of talent scouts for the Chicago White Sox. Any chances of a professional baseball career ended on December 7, 1941. With the United States at war, Keeble enlisted in the North Dakota National Guard and was soon assigned to the 164th Infantry Regiment. After training in Louisiana, the 164th was shipped to the South Pacific, and by October 1942, they reinforced the 1st Marine Division on Guadalcanal, the first Army unit to land on the island. Due to his powerful frame, Keeble was assigned to carry his unit's BAR, or Browning Automatic Rifle, a weapon designed to provide heavy fire support. Keeble excelled in this role, wielding the weapon with considerable accuracy, earning admiration from his comrades. Because of his distinctive weapon and his large size, he also drew the attention of the enemy, who would specifically target him. During the fighting, Keeble's ammunition bearer was killed, a loss that affected him deeply. In subsequent fighting, he refused to use another ammunition bearer, carrying the extra ammo himself rather than risk another person on his behalf. Keeble also earned a reputation for bravery, often scouting ahead of his unit. One of his squad mates stated that Keeble would very often, quote, go in front of patrols and kill enemies before his unit would get there. At Guadalcanal, he earned a Bronze Star and a Purple Heart, and was also awarded for his participation in the landings in the Philippines. After the war, he returned to Wapton, where he married Nettie Owen Robertson and began a teaching career at the Wapton Indian School where he had attended as a child. In 1950, the outbreak of the Korean War led to the reactivation of the 164th, and Keeble was once again called to service. When his commanding officer was ordered to select sergeants to deploy to Korea, he asked the men to draw straws, the most fair way to choose who would be sent overseas. Keeble marched to his CO and deliberately drew a short straw, stating, someone has to teach these kids how to fight. He was assigned to G Company, 2nd Battalion, 19th Infantry Regiment, 24th Infantry Division, and was deployed to the Korean Peninsula. There, Keeble once again earned a reputation as a fierce soldier, stealthily approaching enemy positions and destroying them at close range, once again wielding his BAR with devastating effect. He worked his way up the ranks quickly, earning the rank of Master Sergeant. Keeble's greatest accomplishment would take place in October of 1951 the 24th Division was participating in Operation Nomad Polar, an offensive against North Korean and Chinese forces in the Kumsong region of North Korea, an area of rocky, mountainous terrain that favored defenders. Starting on October 15, Keeble and his unit fought in near-constant combat for almost a week. During this time, G Company suffered heavy casualties as they tried to force the enemy from their well-fortified positions. It was on October 20th, 1951, when Keeble would perform his most heroic action of his military career. Keeble was in command of the support platoon of Company G when the unit was ordered to take Hill 765, a heavily fortified but strategically vital location. With Keeble's platoon looking on, the two other platoons of G Company launched their assault against the Chinese-held positions. Due to the terrain and the fierce enemy opposition, they were repulsed, suffering heavy casualties. The main resistance from Hill 765 was in the form of three machine gun nests that had the men pinned. 
Acting on his own initiative, Keeble joined the pinned man and were better able to assess the situation. Not wanting to risk further lives, he advanced alone, crawling as low as he could towards the closest enemy machine gun nest. When he was close enough, he pulled the pin of a grenade and tossed it at the enemy position. With the skill he acquired as a pitcher, he lobbed the explosive like a baseball with pinpoint accuracy, even though it was almost 50 meters away. Now under fire from the remaining positions, he advanced using another grenade, which he again threw with astonishing accuracy, destroying the position. With the two positions eliminated, the remaining Chinese forces on Hill 765 turn all their attention to Keeble, opening up with a fusillade of concentrated machine gun and rifle fire, as well as a storm of their own grenades. The Chinese defenders desperately tried to hold off the one-man assault. Undeterred by the opposition against him, as well as the numerous wounds he had suffered, Keeble advanced against the third machine gun nest and using his remaining grenades, as well as fire from his BAR, he cleared the third nest. With these three strong points eliminated, the rest of G Company was able to advance. Because of the heavy fighting, all of the other officers had been killed or severely wounded, leaving Master Sergeant Keeble in effective command over the entire company. He directed his men to pour heavy fire on the remaining enemy trench lines, which buckled and eventually broke under the onslaught, allowing the remainder of G Company to secure the vital objective, though it was nightfall by the time the position fell. Master Sergeant Keeble was seen the next day, having wandered into the American encampment, covered in blood, and somewhat dazed due to his wounds, but still requesting more men to continue the advance. He flat out refused medical attention until his men forced him to visit an aid station. He was covered in so many wounds that one soldier said he had looked like he'd been hit by buckshot. During the course of his one-man assault against the Chinese positions, he suffered two bullet wounds to his left arm, a grenade blast that almost blew off his nose, and at least 83 separate fragments were removed from the rest of his body. This was on top of another wound, a glancing bullet to his ear that punched a hole in his helmet he had sustained a few days before. In spite of his injury, he refused to be evacuated and stayed with his unit for another nine months, fighting throughout the Korean peninsula. He would eventually be shipped home and was honorably discharged from the army in August of 1952. After the war, Keeble returned home and continued his teaching career. Shortly after his return, however, he would contract tuberculosis, which would require the surgical removal of one of his lungs. He would suffer a stroke shortly afterwards, which left him partially paralyzed and unable to speak. His wife would pass away a short time later from cancer. He would remarry in 1967, though he would remain unable to speak for the rest of his life. Keeble would pass away on January 28, 1982. For his actions in Korea, Master Sergeant Woodrow Wilson Keeble would be awarded the Distinguished Service Cross, in addition to two silver stars, the Bronze Star, the Bronze Star with V device, the Combat Infantryman's Badge, and four Purple Hearts. After his death, his family embarked on a lengthy campaign to have his award for actions in Korea upgraded to the Medal of Honor, their efforts joined by all four senators of North and South Dakota. After reviewing the case, the U.S. Army agreed, and on March 3, 2008, Master Sergeant Woodrow Wilson Keeble was posthumously awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, which was presented by George W. Bush to his stepson, Russell Hawkins, making Keeble the first full-blooded member of the Dakota Nation to earn the highest honor the American military can bestow. In addition, the Circle of Nations School Gymnasium, Veterans of Foreign Wars post-4324, and a section of U.S. Highway 12 near Wabay, South Dakota, all bear his name. Perhaps the greatest honor, though, was the admiration from the men he fought alongside. One of the men he served with on Guadalcanal stated simply, the safest place to be was right next to Woody.